Hey there, Rocco here. I hope you're doing well and you've had a good new year. And he's, of course, hoping that we all have a better 2021 than we've actually had a, a 2020. Now, a few weeks ago, I posted a video showing what type of speed increase you could expect if you were fortunate enough to get your hands on an RTX 3090. Uh, even the other 3000 series cards that you can get from NVIDIA would give a big boost to your render times. So if you are looking to upgrade your GPU this year, then you probably go, can't go too far wrong with one of those graphics cards. However, there was a post in the comments section by Time Kilo of PK, who, as you can see, not exactly impressed with the 3090. But a good, but a good question was asked concerning, you know, the multiple models for those who want to create big scenes and just, you know, how it would render and how that would affect, affect render times. So I figured that that would be a good thing to check out. Just how many Genesis 8 models could we cram into the 24 gigabytes of the 3090 and how much would each extra model affect the render times uh, for our scene? Now, this might just be for a bit of fun, but it could also be quite informative if you are actually looking to upgrade your GPU. It doesn't matter if you're thinking about a 3090 or a GPU with 6 gigabytes or 8 or 10 gigabytes or... You know, even some, like something like the, the rumoured 12, 16 or 20 gigabytes that we might be getting very shortly from NVIDIA. Uh, now, in the past on my 980 Ti, if I just wanted to put three models into my scene, maybe four to push, uh, I would probably have to use something like Scene Optimizer to make the texture smaller and, you know, make the whole memory footprint a little bit easier for the 980 to handle. Uh, it only had six gigabytes of VRAM. So, you know, I generally, you know, quite often ran into that wall. Uh, incidentally, by the way, if you are on the, the low end when it comes to VRAM, you know, make sure you check out Scene Optimizer because it can basically turn an impossible scene into a probable scene, uh, you know, once it plays around with the textures and reduces them and, and shrinks them down a bit. You don't notice much in the way of quality, so it is something to check out, uh, and you'll be able to find a link to that down in the description below. Now, before we run our little test, uh, there's a couple of things just to point out. Firstly, I'll be placing the models into an actual scene, which you can see on the screen here. Uh, it's an outdoor pool area lit by an HDRI. Uh, now, I did notice later on, by the way, that I'd left the camera headlight on, so there is a bit of light coming in from the camera too. And secondly, each of the models I'm going to be dressing at the minimum I can get away with on a family channel, uh, as in just in the swimwear, as you can see there on the screen. Thirdly, each of the scenes that I'm rendering uh, have been done only to 2,000 iterations. Uh, now, in this test, it, it's not about the final quality of the image or the render, but just how much we can load into the scene and how fast we can render out what we actually ask iRate to render, uh, and then obviously compare one scene to the next. So if we take a look at our baseline then, just poolside with no models in the scene, uh, you can see that we have a VRAM load of 3.9 gigabytes and a render time of 127 seconds, so just slightly less than 1,000 iterations per minute. And if we now just add one model into the scene, we can see that the peak VRAM load goes up to 5.1 gigabytes and time to render jumps up to 187 seconds. Now that 44% jump in render time, perhaps obviously, uh, will actually be the biggest jump that we'll see throughout all this. So what we'll do now is we'll step through the models and I'll get back to you once we break the 3090 uh, with a summary of the results. So I'll see you then. Oh dear. 
Uh, I never expected that to happen. With 14 models in the scene and a peak VRAM load of 17.8 gigabytes, things kind of broke. Uh, for the life of me at the time, I couldn't work out what was going on. And But no matter what I did, I couldn't get that 15th model rendered into the scene. Daz kept crashing, it kept throwing up some render error. Uh, and on one occasion, my entire PC crashed. So... With a little bit of investigation, I did, however, find the problem, and that was Daz was chewing up over 60 gigabytes of system memory during the scene preparation stage at the beginning before the render starts. Uh, and with other bits of memory on my system being used for other things, I ran out of system memory. Now, if we check out the summary table, we can see that each model was eating around one gigabyte of VRAM at peak load. So the 3090 probably could have handled four or five more models before we were running the risk of dropping the CPU. But with Daz eating this 60 gigabyte of system memory, that kind of threw a bit of a spanner in the works. Uh, now that happened and just never entered my mind when I first started this. Uh, I would have thought that 64 gigabytes of system memory would have been more than enough, but apparently not uh so there you go a bit of a surprising result if you want to max out a 3090 in daz or maybe even the rumored 20 gigabyte in the the 3080 ti that's maybe coming uh then make sure you've got enough system memory to handle it uh who'd have thunk it anyway please share and give this video a like if you found it useful or informative it really does help the channel out a bundle likewise if you haven't already please consider subscribing down below as that will really help me out a lot also uh, and finally if you've got any comments or questions about this video or about daz in general or you just fancy a little bit of a chat uh, drop them down below in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as i can so with that surprising turn of events i'll say bye bye for now